Hey guys, welcome to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. I got my stack of papers. I got Johnny Burkett right here in the studio. We're getting ready to do an interview session here. So the last episode where we talked to Johnny Burkett was just a uh, just a good conversation, just introducing Johnny Burkett and uh, telling you a little bit about Pit Hustle Barbecue and uh, kind of what they're all about. Um, but Scott, being as amazing as he is, you know my Scott, he's actually right over there. You can't see him. But uh, anyway, he uh, wrote me a list of questions for Johnny. And I'm going to go ahead and ask those questions, and we'll see what he has to say for himself. You ready for this? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You never know where it's going to go. No, Shoot, we might ask one question and then rabbit trail for the whole, you know, the whole another 15 minutes there. Might go mind blank. <laughs> you might. I've been know. locked up for so long. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's been crazy. So anyway, first question, what in the world have you been doing during lockdown? <laughs> Imagine that. I don't even know, right? What have I been doing? Since That's like an easy question to ask right now with everybody being locked up. I've been working. Have what you I've really? Been yeah, we've yeah. been working. What's Johnny do for a living besides cook amazing barbecue and teach people how to <laughs> how to be superstars in barbecue? Uh, he works by the river, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he works yep. by the river. Works by the river. Makes the tow boats go. Makes the tow boats go. Uh, yeah, I love tow boat songs. You know, that's you ever listen to John Hartford? I don't think so. Uh, you're missing out if you're a tow boat man. You got to listen to the tow boat songs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I've listened to some of them, but most of them are uh, not worth listening to. <laughs> Is that right? That makes any sense. They're too pop country. Oh, they're pretty way far down there. All right, so. So you've been working, and I mean, you've been doing some cooking, though. Been doing I know a lot that for cooking. sure. A lot of cooking. Yeah, Pit Hustle 2.0. Did cooking. some virtual contests. Uh, yeah. Made it to a championship round, won that. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, let's see, just been doing a lot of a lot of cooking. Been uh, Took the Pit Hustle 2.0 uh, from Frank here at Smoker Builder. Took it home a couple weeks ago. Yeah. What was it? A month and a half ago? It's been a month and a half, yeah. Supposed to cook a contest back up here, and then went to St. Louis, and basically the COVID hit, and... Couldn't mm-hmm. cook those, and uh, basically just been running the mill on the 2.0 there and trying to get get it uh, mm-hmm. dialed in. Been cooking anything from chicken to ribs to pork butts to briskets to jalapeno poppers to yeah. basically anything I can get my hands on here. Sounds like you run it about every week. I'm running. Anytime I'm off, I'm throwing a bag full of charcoal in and letting it run. If I can't what kind of charcoal, if I couldn't tell already? A little bit of world load. Oh, man. <laughs> that isn't any good. You like the tumbleweeds? I love the tumbleweeds. Dude, I really, like the tumbleweeds, they too. They really man. make my life a whole lot easier than yeah. uh, the chimney. Yeah. I like the chimney, but running the uh, the new drum system, mm-hmm. uh, doing a little different. So we're using the tumbleweeds that actually started off in the in You the top lighting. The top basket, lighting. and you got yep. the drum open, lid yep. open, let it let it go until flames come out the top, and then yep. shut her down. I, I usually run about. A, <laughs> I usually let the dial run about up to about a hundred degrees before I put the lid. Before down. Before you put the lid down, that's kind of my mark. So, uh, what kind of? I got to get back to Scott's questions here, but uh, <laughs> we don't want to get in trouble. But uh, what kind of temp range are you cooking typically, like start to finish, like big swing? Big swing. Uh, if I'm doing brisket, I'm somewhere between four fifty to five hundred, and then dropping her down. Uh, running the draft master system, uh, mm-hmm. putting the super tuner plate on to drop it back down about three to three twenty five. But and it locks down at three when you put that yep. super tuner back in. It, is the super tuner all turned blue? <laughs> no, it actually isn't. It really <laughs> Mine isn't. did. Mine turned blue. I seen it was a pretty blue. Too. I was like, man, that is beautiful. Yeah, but that's a hot drum, man. It is. Yeah. It really is. And uh, running it three inch really makes it where you can achieve it. Mm-hmm. You're not struggling to try to get airflow. Yeah. But I've been running anywhere from between three to three twenty five is what I've been running mm-hmm. in the drum. And okay. the whole point is hot and fast cooking. Hot and fast. I mean, you want to run that thing like the Jambo guys are doing, and you want to start off at four fifty. Swell the brisket, 500, whatever. You, you said hot as I can get is hot what you told me. That's <laughs> basically, now is basically get it to where you need it, wrap it, and uh, finish it out, let it rest. Yeah. So that's our goal. And that rest is everything. Yep. Used to be uh, go cook for 12 hours and come home dog dog tired. Dog and, uh, tired. <laughs> I can't do anything the next day, so we done eliminated all that. So. <laughs> yeah. Sleep in the hotel the night before. Man, sleeping in a hotel is always great if you get that hotel, but most of the time we just show, usually with us, is what happens is we're one of us is usually working. So, usually work off that morning, trying to get everything done, drive to where you're at. By the time you get everything prepped, it's about midnight, so you get about three, four hours sleep, and then you're back up and put it on. Pit hustle. 
Quit hustling, baby. Hustling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hit the next question here. Were you able to cook a lot? Uh, build a lot. Build? Yeah, build cookers. Actually, Colby got build to build one? some. Yeah, I haven't did. got to build any. Yeah. He got to build two the other day. He uh, built that pimp, uh, I can't remember what it was called, pimp something, the red drum. Yeah, the red drum. And I think he liked that so much, I think he thinks we're going to turn the other ones into red and black drums. So yeah. We was going to actually powder coat them and uh, didn't get to, so we just went ahead with the Frank Cox Special and clear coat them up. Yeah. Went about them that way, and then COVID hit, and then we had plenty of time to powder coat them. <laughs> it was done. We rushed to get them done and got here. So Yeah, because all the contests taking, got canceled. Taking advantage of cooking on them. So mm-hmm. that was a fun experience. Got to come up here and uh, get, get on the parts. Sorry. And then uh, <laughs> took those home, put those together. Mm-hmm. About, I don't know. It took about a day to get uh, all three of those put together. Everything drilled out, mm-hmm. so it was pretty cool. Cool. What's uh, what's the barbecue skills you have been sharpening in the time? <laughs> barbecue skills I've been sharpening. Yeah. What What is the thing that you've been like paying the most attention to? Like we always say, what's the thing that moves the needle in uh, in what you're trying to co- get accomplished, like get your goals accomplished quickly? I'll say one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, rendering. Rendering. That's like one thing I have been working on. Rendering fat? Yep. While you're cooking? Yes. Yeah? Uh, you know, I feel like everything else is pretty much on point. You know, our trimming skills, our prep skills, our, uh, our layouts, our timelines. Uh, you know, basically with barbecue now, we never ran a timeline. Yeah. Back when we was cooking. Mm-hmm. We never ran. We ran everything off touch, feel, smell we could tell you what was going on just by smelling what was going on in the cooker Mm -hmm. and uh, we never ran a timeline we just cooked and had fun that's what we did uh so now everything's kind of laid out in uh google Docs. so basically i print it off edit it whatever i need to do but from a checklist to every product that we're that we have that we're using to every injection from start to finish from what's gonna what you're gonna use on chicken what you're gonna use on pork what you're gonna use on brisket it all has a layout of all the products. Yeah. And then I started basically a Friday layout mm-hmm. that uh, gives you everything to do on Friday. Mm-hmm. And then on Saturday, what you're going to do on Saturday. So you're getting your process map. Getting everything processed out. Yeah. So that way, everything can be consistent. Yeah. Uh, you know, because if you're not cooking a lot like us on contests, we only get to do about four or five a year with our work schedules. We're mm-hmm. not fortunate to where we can go cook 20 contests a year. It would be great. But honestly, I don't have $20,000 to blow. <laughs> so, you know. It's it is about 800 bucks a contest if you do it the hard yeah, way. So we would actually yeah. hit up all the big contests. We was going to run the points race for uh, St. Louis Barbecue side this year, but I don't know if they're going to have that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of playing everything by ear. But basically run the process. Uh we are got a few things in the works. I'm not going to talk about them right now, but we do have a few things in the works for some of the backyard guys and some of the beginners starting out that has a lot of questions or need some help on how to get started or what they need to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, we will be going that direction. But basically everything else, the, the finished product, the way the meat looks, the trim, everything, I think everything's fine with that. We've been cooking so long, we've been doing it, that I think everything's on point. Uh, yeah. Once we find that one point that we're looking for for each meat, uh, that's when the game's going to change. Yeah. So, and we're still looking. I feel like pork has went from the last category to the top category. Mm-hmm. Brisket's always been right there in the top ten, no matter what. Chicken's done real good, but we've changed up a, a, a small amount of things. And ribs has always been our uh, thorn in the side. Yeah. So, last contest, I think we went fourth. The contest before that, we was 25th. So, you know, we've kind of changed up some so, things. So you're always in the top 10 anyway, it seems uh, like. It seems like you're close. close or yeah. right there top 12, top 10, whatever. Mm-hmm. We're trying to be right there in the top eight where we want to be at. Mm-hmm. So that's what basically we've been working on through the whole COVID crisis. And basically anything we get our hands on to cook, that's what we've been cooking. We've got you some de-bone? meat we'll go. Pork? Pork? Uh, yes, we debone it. I noticed uh, a lot of guys are starting to do that. They just debone and unroll it and... Uh, I remember back in the day with us, it was a matter of just scoping out that money muscle, getting it where you can find it once it's cooked, and I remember cutting that sucker out. out. I don't remember <laughs> back in the day. I don't remember trimming any butts down hardly. Yeah, you know, I don't remember uh, ribs. Same thing, same trim, same everything. Yeah. Uh, chicken uh, was about the same thing. Chicken always did decent. 
Uh, brisket, same thing. You know, we always try to about seven inches to mm-hmm. so it go in the box, you know, right there. But pork, I can't never remember anything being. Uh, yeah, we never remember. got crazy. We we cut out the feather bones and hit the real bad uh, fat yeah. areas, whatever. Cut that gland out, and then pretty much it was a matter of identifying the money muscle. And uh, you know, it wasn't until this year I was watching one of Cosmos uh, live streams from the American Royal, and I I found out there's like a false money muscle. Yep, it's like a little layer <laughs> right, that's right on right top. The All this time I've been leaving that in there, I had no idea. A lot of know? people do leave that in there because Dude, they, there's they so think much to it. They're afraid to cut it. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing with the money muscle. Everybody's like, well, if I cut it, then am I gonna am I messing it up? Yeah. And the biggest thing I can say is go get you a cheap butt from the grocery store, which you will not find any right now <laughs> at all. Yeah, you will not. That's <laughs> but for sure. But when stuff comes down, <laughs> go buy you a cheap piece of meat. Yeah. And just take it apart. Yeah. And learn where all the tubes are, the money mm-hmm. muscle, the uh, the bacon, the horn meat, mm-hmm. all those sections and break it down so that way you can be familiar with that butt. Mm-hmm. And you can discard what you like and what you don't like because, like, now, this year, like, even when we started Pit Hustle uh, two years ago, we still wasn't trimming butts down. I was like, man, our butts aren't getting done quick enough. So now we're actually trimming down to four pounds. Really? Every one of them, weighing them out, four pounds. No kidding. No more, no less. So I've never really heard anybody say that they're trimming down to a weight. Yeah. That's kind of like Dude, boxing. that's that's like threading the needle. Yeah, that's that's, that's I think you have right to there. have it though if yeah. you want to contend in the port game. I think uh-huh. you have to have uh, consistency yeah. on weight. Well, I mean everything from cleaning your cooker. If you clean yep. your cooker after every contest, you got to freaking clean your cooker after every contest, or you're going to lose that rhythm. I just you, actually did a video on that though. Yeah, day. saw that. Yeah, I mean, you had one you that was clean. Tell, yeah, wiped your finger on it, and the other one you wiped your finger on it, it was dirty. And you could tell the difference. And people don't understand that. And the biggest thing I can figure out is like the exhaust pipe. They don't clean it. Yeah. And the, it drips down on the meat, and that's where all the black spots are coming out on your meat. If you don't this clean it is off. exhaust pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so. What are you uh, what are you encouraging? What are you no, 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 no. sorry guys? What do you encourage aspiring pitmasters to be to be doing during this time of social distancing? Social distancing. Which one now? Uh, <laughs> How are they asking you questions? <laughs> uh I would say take the time and relax. That's my biggest thing right really? now. Really? As I've took the time to relax and take it as a learning process mm-hmm. that I don't get all the time because I'm constantly running, constantly going. Something's always going on. If you got baseball or kids or anything else going on, you don't get a lot of time to practice. Mm-hmm. So take the time that you do have and concentrate on one thing mm-hmm. instead of trying to concentrate on everything. Four categories. I concentrate basically – a month is what I've been doing is one meat. So I think Pick there was pork and do yep. one month. Just and do just one cook month. Pork. Yeah. I think I cooked I don't know how many times I've cooked ribs mm-hmm. in the past couple months mm-hmm. to where everybody's tired of eating ribs because that's all they had and that's all I was cooking. <laughs> but then it went to pork. So I was finding pork a lot of pork butts. So I was buying those two packs and I was cooking them on my days off. I'd cook one day, and then the next day, I'd cook again. Mm-hmm. If I was there at the house, I was taking that time to find out what I could do with that pork butt. Mm-hmm. I was taking it up as high as I could get it on my cooker. Yeah. I was taking it low. I was, like we talking about four pounds, mm-hmm. or what we wanted to do with the seasoning, how we need to set it, how much seasoning, how much less seasoning. No. Because if you want the layers. meat to shine through, layers, that's the thing, just concentrate on one thing. Mm-hmm. And then worry about the time frame later. Mm-hmm. If you if something you are doing is writing everything down. When you get up that day, get your notepad. Find out what the weather is. Find out what the humidity is. Find out what the barometric pressure is. Write down what uh, product you are using, what brand you are using, what injections, what sauce, what seasoning. Write that all down on a piece of paper. I Good have master's stuff, notebook. Basically, yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I have notebooks that, that have all kinds of stuff in them. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't always go by the same timeline. But I can go back and narrow it down. So if I know there's a contest coming up and I know if the humidity is going to be high and the barometric pressure is going to be high, that I can take that in accountability. Mm-hmm. Or if it's going to rain that day, what happened when it rained that day to the meat? Mm-hmm. It didn't cook faster. We ran into this problem down in Arkansas, uh, down there cooking. And uh, the biggest issue I had was I ran a charcoal at the end. And it cost a lot of money. Yeah. And we didn't realize it, almost didn't realize it until it was too late. 
but it cost me my chicken turn in. And basically, chicken's always in the top 10, and I think it was like 24th. So, huh. sorry, everybody. <laughs> I need to see, hit, hit the OK button on the timer. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, it was 20, 24th, I think, out of however many teams. But it's because I didn't get to run my time frame on my chicken because everything cooked so much faster, it was burning the charcoal out quicker. Mm-hmm. So that was something that I had to experience because cooking on drums the past two years, I haven't learned that yet. So that was something new that I learned that day. Mm-hmm. But we caught it. We got all the big meats, everything else pushed forward. But it cost me chicken time to go ahead and rush it. And we knew when we turned it in, it was beautiful and pretty, but we knew it wasn't going to eat. So, you know, that's the things of a learning process that you need to do in your backyard before you get to the contest or it's going to cost you a bunch of money like it did us. That Well, yeah, it cost you the money uh, for buying all your meat, getting getting there, you know, the time down from whatever you would have been doing, you know, plus you didn't win no money. Exactly. (laughs) And I don't care to get beat by you. I just don't want to get beat by me. Yeah, that's a bad deal. That's the problem I have going on when I beat myself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, That's bad. So what's an event you're looking forward to once all this uh, COVID stuff is over? COVID stuff, man, seems to be the topic of the day. I know, right? <laughs> we, we, have to wait, we have to wear it out. That's uh, the probably, trending topic. Man, there's so many good ones right now. But I think we've picked out, uh, probably going to go maybe here in June, maybe go over to Springfield. they got a contest going. I think it's $20,000 payout. Mm-hmm. Uh, Q down there in, uh, I guess it's down in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I don't remember how much it is. a big-time contest. should have a lot of teams, big-time payout. Um, it's trying to go to Murfreesboro this year, but I don't know if, what's going to happen with all that. But mm-hmm. probably the one we're looking forward to the most is the Rural. Uh, yeah, We haven't been so. to the Rural, and all the time we've been cooking, we've always talked about it, uh, but we've never been. So yeah. going to the Rural this year is going to be a fun, excitement time. We're not going to roll up in trailer. We're going to roll up in a tent. Mm-hmm. We're still going to be there cooking. So if you're at the American Rule, <laughs> come by and see Johnny. Come yeah. by and watch. We'd love to have a crowd come yeah. by and just kind of watch Hang everything out. that's going on. Yeah. Ain't going to bother us one B-Y-O-B. bit. BYOB. We do a lot better under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we'll be there. Smoker Builder will. We're probably not going to cook, but we'll be there with you guys. We'll be there with uh, the 43rd Parallel Barbecue. Right. Um you know, uh, really, really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited. Going to see a lot of people. I think uh, Freddie Vegas will be there. That's our buddy down there, Chris Salisbury, and uh, out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. He'll be there. Uh, at least I think he will. Anyway, he's got a big old crazy trailer now. I also don't know where everybody's going to be at this year because, I mean, it's, they're going to the points race. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going, a lot of doubles. Uh, there's really no telling what's going to happen. I, heard I, I bet there will uh, be a lot of doubles this year letting, trying to get points, trying to get – you know, stuff going. Yep. Get all them contests. And I think it's going to be more of a, I've cooked 40 contests this year to I've cooked 25 contests, and you better cook 25 good contests. Yeah. So watch out for my boy Heavy Smoke. <laughs> yeah, Chris, yeah. <laughs> hey, so uh, fat, we got one more question. Uh-oh, one this, more is a, question. this is a heavy one, folks. So here we go. Fat cap up or fat cap down? Fat cap down. Why? Oh, man. This is the age-old debate. I know. There's it's, so it's much like, myth. There's so much myth and so much uh, speculation, but no testing that actually supports the right or wrong answer. But I'll tell you this. Everyone has an opinion. I'm not the brisket <laughs> guy. <laughs> well, brisket or pork, bud. But I'll tell one. you this. If you're cooking on a drum smoker, you better go fat side down. <laughs> That's yeah, all I, I can agree, tell you. I agree you. with that. Yeah. That's why I can tell you right now. The cabinet smoker... I don't think it really matters. Yeah. That's an honest truth. Even. Yeah. You can go either way. Um, if I was cooking cabinet smoker, I would go fat side down. No doubt about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it just don't really, either way, don't really bother me. As long as it ain't the UDS. UDS, if you're not fat side down, then. Why? You, why? Because yeah. you're going to need something to protect all the heat <laughs> coming up. Well, because you're putting it on there, on your, the way you guys are cooking, you're putting it on there 450, 500 yeah. degrees. And uh, you know, to get that get that fat cap on there, get some sear going on the bottom side, microwave, whatever you do you think it's an upside down microwave on a drum? Uh, well, because I'm thinking like an open air offset, like we're hitting it up on top yeah. is what we're doing with that. I'm fixing a uh, I'm fixing a try something new <laughs> in the chicken world. 
Are you? Yeah. So we're going to see tuned. what you was talking about. Yeah. Talked to about that the other day. Yeah. How can we be more efficient with cooking chicken in a drum? Okay. So I'll talk to you about that after we get off here. Oh, you can't let the secret spill <laughs> out, can you? But uh, <laughs> fat side up, fat side down. There's no wrong way. Just There's cook no the wrong meat. way. Just cook the meat. Just get out there the and cook. Yeah, yeah. I think Maybe it's try matter. fat cap down just on a drum smoker, but yeah. Well, hey, folks, we really appreciate you listening here. Uh, Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Um, normally, we get all geeked out and talk about like how to build smokers and uh, you know operation and a lot of technical and things like that. But once in a while, we get a guy like Johnny in here in the <laughs> studio, and uh, you know I, I'm really happy with this whole studio thing. It's going to enable us to do more interviews and uh, you know talk to some people that we care about and. Uh, if you want to, get on over there to Pit Hustle BBQ on Facebook or Instagram. Give them guys a follow. Join in their group, that kind of thing. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. Uh, subscribe to the podcast, and uh, we'll bring as much value to you as we possibly can. Till next time, we'll talk to you later, fellas. Thanks a lot.